I'm here to talk to you all about Appalachian old time music. I'm willing to bet that label doesn't mean very much to a lot of people in this room, but I'm also willing to bet that everybody here has encountered old time in some way, shape, or form during their life. Finish this lyric for me. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Right, raise your hand if you, if you, remember, if you remember this melody. This is for the old folks. Do, 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 do. There we go. I didn't have to get far. First one, Cotton Eye Joe, a dyed in the wool old time tune originating on slave plantations, covered by the Swedish band Rednecks in the late 90s uh, to unexpected international success. The second one, Turkey in the Straw, descended from an Irish tune, been through a number of less than savory permutations over the years but I now know it as the ice cream truck song. We've all come into contact with this music. It's all around us, but a lot of us go through life without ever understanding what it is. So I'm here to help remedy that. I'm gonna tell you all a little bit about where old time music is from, who it's from, what instruments are involved and what it sounds like, and then the guiding principles of that tradition. So as Appalachian old time music's name suggests, it's from the Appalachian Mountains. We're talking about Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, even parts of upstate New York. And with a geographic spread that big, you're bound to get many different ethnic and cultural influences on the music. Old time music does not disappoint. Although its Scottish and Irish heritage is relatively well known, every ethnic group that's ever existed in the American Southeast has left indelible fingerprints on the legacy of the music. African-American slaves developed the banjo on this continent from a West African instrument called the Akanting. They introduced it to old time music and totally changed the rhythmic and melodic character. German immigrants brought over an instrument called the Scheithold that would evolve into what we now know as the Appalachian dulcimer, a signature instrument of the musical style often found in the northern part of the mountain range. This is a deeply syncretic profoundly American form of music. But what does it actually sound like? That's not necessarily an easy question to answer because we don't learn from big books of sheet music, although they do exist. It's an oral tradition. When I first started learning, I made trips down to North Carolina and to West Virginia, and I still do, to spend time with some old folks who had some good tunes, and they passed those down to me. This music is intensely rooted in heritage and culture, and as a result, you might not recognize it if it came from Tennessee or Georgia as opposed to West Virginia. It doesn't always sound like it does everywhere else. But there are certain things that it has in common across the board. You can look for a fiddle or a banjo, or perhaps both as the leaders of the ensemble. The music is hot, it's rhythmic, it's fun. But beyond that, it has a number of traits that are not shared by other genres that tend to have similar instrumentation. How can you differentiate it from Celtic music, from bluegrass, from honky tonk, or from modern folk? I'm gonna tell you a story to illustrate it. This fall, I set foot on a 135-foot, two-masted, nine-sailed steel brigantine called the SSV Robert C. Siemens. We sailed 2,500 nautical miles from American Samoa to Auckland, New Zealand, and along the way, we stopped in Vavau Tonga. Now, an old man walked up to our ship while we were in port and told us he was a teacher at the local middle school and wanted to bring his navigation students to see our ship. Needless to say, we said yes, and we wound up with 20 to 30 Tongan school children on our boat for dinner that night. One of them played guitar in the local style, and I taught him an old time tune, and before you know it, I had these 10 to 15 year old school children from the South Pacific singing along raucously to a song about moonshining in Georgia. If that wasn't enough, I took them off the ship onto the pier, a big sandy area lined with red and blue shipping containers, paired each one off with a member of the ship's crew and called a square dance. And immediately, all of the awkwardness and tension that comes with meeting someone across that kind of cultural and linguistic barrier fell away. They even renamed our ship. The SSV Robert C. Siemens became the Universite He Vahanoa, the floating university. I'll tell you this story to illustrate three key concepts of old time music. The first is that it's community building and community based. This music developed at slave frolics, at workings, where Appalachian people would get together and shuck their corn, weave their baskets, and close out with a dance. That's the second characteristic. It's dance music, it's fun, it's funky, and you want to get physically involved. Which brings us to the third characteristic. It's participatory. 
happy. People clap, they stomp, they shout, whoop and holler, and they sing. And very few people manage to listen very long without learning to play an instrument themselves. And that has a profound impact on what the music looks like in the modern age. We revolve around festivals like many other music communities do, but ours don't look a whole lot like anybody else's. Instead of booking performers and setting them on a stage and watching, we tend to just gather in a field somewhere under tents and play music together. It's a fantastic experience. You meet people from all over the world and they carry that jam building, community building ethos back to wherever they go. And now more than ever, it's critically important that we all become aware of these community building, connection building traditions that we have. We become aware of what we have to offer other cultures and what other cultures have to offer us and have already offered us. It's crucially important that we learn to build those friendships. But now I've talked your ear off, I did bring a fiddle today. Um, so I'm gonna play you a tune called Poe Black Sheep that comes from a black old time string band duo in Tennessee uh, by the name of Fraser and Patterson. I'm gonna turn off my mic so I don't deafen all of you.